So hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about some special cases that are going to be covered in your class. And for that, I will be using the same problem as the previous video, which is this 2D frame you see on the screen that we model, analyze and saw the results in our previous video. So if you saw that video or you model yourself, you probably have uh, the same model as I and you can follow along. So the special cases we are going to be cover is uh, the use of hinges in frame elements, the settlement of supports, and the use of thermal loads in our frame. All these trick problems, special cases, will be covered using this same frame that we modeled in the previous video. So for that, let's go to our uh, handout that you can print to follow along better. We see that we have the same problem for all of them. We have four different problems. And all of them ask to determine the joint displacements, member local and force and support reactions, and uh, moment shear diagram. And for all that, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to obtain those values because it's the exact same uh, steps that we did in our previous videos. So I'm just gonna show you how to include these special cases in the model, but for the results, you can follow the steps of our two previous videos to obtain that. However, I'm going to be showing the results in my uh, Excel spreadsheet. So if you want to follow along and model this, you can compare your results with mine. So let's go to our first problem here, which is the same frame we had before, but now we will have an element that is connected to this frame using a pin connection in here and a joint, uh, sorry, a pin connection in here and a hinge in this support over here. So to include that, I'm gonna save this um, problem with a different name. Let's say video four, example one, save. And to include that element here, I made it that we can use this grid already. We don't need to modify our grid because that pin element is gonna come from here to here. So to do that, I'm just gonna go to create. I'm gonna use the same section that I'm using for this frame over here. So the section is the same. But now instead of continues, we're going to use the pinned uh, element. So we're going to come here, select the pin, click on the first node, click on the second, and press ask to exit this. I'm going to assign the joints restraints to be a pinned, meaning it will restrain both vertical and horizontal. So our vertical is three and our horizontal is one. So we're gonna unselect this and we should see a pin. So right now, going back to our problem, so our load distribution here is the same. The only difference is that we have this element that will help the structure when the support uh, wants to move. So right now we already have our structure all defined. We don't need to do anything else instead of running this, this analysis. So let's run the live conditions. And here we see that the deflected shape of this structure is pretty much similar from the last one. But if we go to the axial force diagram, we will see that this element picks up some forces of the structure. So if you compare this result with the one we had on our previous video, you will see that they are not the same. So if you want to compare your results, to the ones I got in this problem. These are the joint displacements and the joint uh, reactions for this structure over here. Before we jump to our next special case, which is uh, settlement of the supports, I want to show how to include a hinge in an element. So for that, let's unlock our model so we can edit this structure. Let's select uh, this element over here, for example. This is just an example to show you. 
come to frame and select releases or partial fixity. So in here, we can choose which uh, action we want to release in the frame element we selected. So for example, a hinge on the end of this element would mean that we don't have moment transmission from this element to any of the other elements of the frame. So if you want to put a hinge in the end of this element, we select the end, click OK. And now we see that Zap 2000 shows like this, that the moment will not be transmitted from this element to this. And once we do that, it also shows that the element that we already have pinned also has the same uh, pattern of showing the element with no moment or pinned ends. So if we run again just for the sake of it and show the deflected shape, we will see that the deflected shape is a little bit different now. And we can also come to the moment uh, diagrams to see that our moment now is zero at the support, meaning that the pin or the hinge here is working. So for our next uh, problem, let's go back to our PDF. Our next problem is the same uh, frame as we had before, but we need to determine joint displacement, actual force to support reactions but due to the combined effect of the loading that we had, plus a settlement of 10 millimeters of the second support. So let's go back to SEP. Let's uh, unlock our model. Let's click on this element, delete it. We don't want that. Let's come back here and go into a reverse step and fix this release. So it's still like a frame as we was before. And now we want to add a load to our current load pattern, which is the live load pattern. If you come back to display and show load assigns on the frame and select the live load pattern, you will see the load case we have. So we want to add to that a joint settlement in node number two. So to do that, select the node, come to assign, joint loads, and instead of forces, select displacement. Let's move our um, units to millimeters and newtons. Let's uh, combine it to the live load we already have. And we want a settlement in the vertical direction of 10 millimeters. So in the global uh, Z, which is our vertical direction, we're going to settle it down 10 millimeters. And we're going to add this to the existing loads we already have. All right, so here we can see our displacement in meters because our units here is still in kilonewton meters. Here we can see 10 millimeters. So there's nothing else to be done. We can come here and run our analysis, select the live load, which is now a combination of forces and displacement run this analysis, and it's already showing the moment uh, diagram. But if we come to the, this, the form shape, we will see that this um, support here came down by 10 millimeters. And you can put your mouse on the node to see that the displacement U3 is minus 10, indicating that it went down in minus 10 millimeters. All right, so if you want to check uh, your results with the one I got, uh, this is the table for the displacement and the reactions of the support. All right, so going back to SEP, now our third uh, special case is to determine the joint displacement and member forces support reactions for the plane frame we had before with a temperature increase of 50 degrees in these two members, taking the coefficient of uh, temperature variation of 1.34 times 10 to the minus, minus five. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna unlock our model. We're going to delete uh, the displacement we had before. Come back to live and select, don't need to change anything here, just delete the existing load. We come to display and show our load assigns to make sure that the only load we have is the original one. And now we're gonna include the temperature uh, in this load conditions. But first, we need to make sure that our um, coefficient of thermal variation is the same as the specified in the problem. So let's go back to define our materials. This material we defined in our first previous video. We're gonna modify and show this material. And here on the coefficient, coefficient of thermal expansion, we're gonna select uh, the value we have, 1.34. So let's put 1.34 times 10 to the minus 5. Let's click OK. We don't need to reassign anything since there are elements, oops, since our elements already have our section, which is defined as the same material that we define, uh, it will auto update. So now to assign the temperature load, we're gonna select on both elements because both of them will have this uh, thermal load. We're gonna assign frame loads and we're gonna come to temperature. We're gonna put the live load. So it's gonna uh, add to the loading condition we have. We're gonna select the temperature and we're going to specify 50 degrees. So come to 50, let's add to the existing loads, temperature, live okay so we see here the temperature load now the only thing we need to do is to run our analysis and now we see our different uh, kind of the same uh, displacement but now we have the contribution of this thermal load so again if you want to compare your results with the one i got this is the results for the displacement of the nodes, and this is the results for the reactions, the support. So finally, let's close this. Finally, going back to our last uh, special case, we're gonna determine the joint displacements, member and forces and support reactions for the same plane frame we had before. But now the temperature is gonna be a gradient, meaning that the top of the cross section will be at 55 and the bottom will be at 5. So there is a 50 degrees gradient throughout the cross section. And this guy, in this case, we're going to change our coefficient of thermal expansion from the previous we had to a different value and assume that the depth of the cross section, the height of the cross section, is 331.66 millimeters, which is the value we already used before to when we created this frame. So this is a convenient number, but if this number were different, you would have to modify your cross section to match the height, to match the area and the inertia, as I explained in previous videos. So let's go back here, um, unlock our model, select the two frames we had, come to frame loads, temperature, let's delete first the temperature load we had before. So now we don't have anything. Let's go back to our materials, the material we selected. Let's modify this to our new value, which is 1.47. Click OK. Now select again our frame elements, come to frame load and temperature. But in this time, instead of temperature, we're going to select the temperature gradient 2.2. Two. 2.2 two, two again is the direction uh, perpendicular to the element length in the, in, the local direction, in the local coordinate system of the element. So right now we have to specify a temperature which is Celsius per meter because our unit here is Celsius and meter. So Going back to our problem, we have a temperature variation of 55 and 5, so 50 degrees Celsius. And we have 
a height of a structure of 331.66 millimeters. So if we use a calculator to do 50 degrees Celsius divided by 0.33166 meters, we will have a 150 degrees 0.76 degrees Celsius per meter. So let's go back to our SEP 2000 and put the value we calculated. Oops, 150.76. And add to existing loads live. Click OK. And we see here our degrees Celsius per meter. So we don't need to do anything else. We just need to run our analysis. And here we see the results. Let's see the displacement of our structure based on the gradient low thermal load that we have. So if you want to compare your results with the one I got, uh, this is the results for the displacement and this is for the reactions. All right, so this is the four uh, special cases that you will be dealing in your assignment for this class. And I hope this video helps you to um, verify your hand calculations or perform your problems in SEP 2000. And I wish you good luck.